What does every bot and sweat in Warzone have in common? They all die to gas in exactly the same time. Hey, it's getting cloudy. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I've amassed nearly 300 wins in Warzone 2 without killing a single player thanks to the fact that 99% of players don't know how to survive the gas at all. But gas plays aren't only relevant to the zero kill challenge. Anyone who's going for kills will eventually meet their end if they don't remember the reason they're even fighting in the first place. You forgot about the essence of the game. It's about the zones. Players treat the gas as an impenetrable wall of death that cannot be survived, and it pushes them out in the open to die when they wouldn't have to be afraid if they knew what they were doing. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. So I'm going to share four tips I use to survive the gas that you can use to get in better positions to win your end games. And at the end, I'll explain how this affects World Series of Warzone because the gas mechanics in custom lobbies are totally different and the World Championship could be decided based on who learns the differences and who does not. What? What the fuck? Let's begin. Okay, so the first tip to remember is that the gas is really weak now. We all have PTSD from Season 1 of Warzone 2 where the movement was super slow and the gas moved super fast and seemed to kill us instantly. But that's all changed now. In Season 4, the gas damage got nerfed and the health pool got buffed, so it now takes 25 seconds for the gas to down a player from full health, whereas previously it would only take 12 seconds. That 13 second difference is like having an extra gas mask as part of your base health. It now takes a long time for anyone to die to gas. Bearing in mind that the TTK of enemy weapons in Warzone is likely to be measured in milliseconds, the TTK of the gas is ridiculously slow. If you're being gatekept by someone in the zone using a meta weapon with a 700 millisecond TTK, it might be smart to choose the 25,000 millisecond TTK of the gas instead and make a gas play. Obviously, the strongest defense against the gas is the durable gas mask, which lasts 25 seconds in gas, twice as long as a normal gas mask. These are readily available in buy stations and are absolutely worth the money to allow you to position easily and dominate the final zones. If your whole team isn't wearing durable gas masks going into the endgame, you'll be at a huge disadvantage to any team that is wearing them. Once your gas mask runs out, there are still ways to prolong your life and survive until the zone comes back to you. Stims are the most misunderstood item in Warzone 2, mainly because they work so differently from Warzone 1. In Warzone 1, they would heal you continuously until you were full health, but in Warzone 2, any kind of damage will interrupt the healing and you may end up getting back less than full health. For stimming in the gas, it's important to remember that the gas deals damage at precise one second intervals. This means you only get a one second window to heal from a stim in between hits of gas damage. If your stim starts healing you right before that window closes, it'll be interrupted immediately and you'll get no health back. To get the most out of your stims, you need to time them to start healing you right after the gas hits you, so you get a full second of healing before the next gas hit. Stims heal at a rate of 75 HP per second, which means the most you can get back from a single stim if you heal for a full second is 75 HP, or half your health at 150 HP. So don't bother waiting for your health to drop below half before stimming. This isn't Warzone 1. The third thing is to bear in mind that if you've been in gas for more than a minute, you'll start to be hit by increased gas damage. This doesn't mean the gas hits you faster, it's still only one hit per second, but the damage dealt each second is larger. In the first minute you take 6 damage per second, after a minute that jumps to 12 damage per second, after 2 minutes it's 18, and so on. It's still possible to survive this with well-timed stims giving you 75 HP each, but if your stim timing is off, you'll lose health faster than you can heal it and die pretty quickly. After a minute, it's also barely possible to pull off a self-revive before the gas will thirst you, and if you do revive, you'll be 1 HP and die 1 second later. A med vest will speed up your self-revive and allow you to revive faster than the gas will kill you, even after the gas damage increases at the 1 minute mark. The only way to counter increased gas damage is to get back in the safe zone. If you can touch the safe zone even for an instant, your gas time will be reset back to zero and the gas damage will be back to normal when you go in the gas again. Speaking of med vests, tip 4 is that the med vest has a hidden effect when combined with battle rage. Battle Rage alone will work like a super stim. It heals you at 150 HP per second, so it can give you full health if you time it right, but it will be interrupted by gas damage just like a stim. So if you time it badly, you might not get much health back at all. If you're wearing a med vest on the other hand, the timing is irrelevant. The Battle Rage will continuously heal you as long as it's active, keeping you topped up at full health for the entire duration of the Battle Rage effect, which is 15 seconds. 
At the end of that, you'll also be left with full health, so it will take even more time for the gas to wear you down and kill you after the battle rage finishes. Okay, so how does this affect World Series of Warzone? When the best players in the world get together, many of them make the decision to play the gas instead of face the harsh TTK of enemies who don't miss shots. Unfortunately for these demons who are used to making plays in public matches, World Series of Warzone games take place in custom lobbies, where the gas and stims actually work differently than normal public matches. Yeah, it doesn't work. Stim, my stim just gassed me. My stim just scammed me. This seems to be a bug introduced with the gas changes between Season 3 and Season 4, but this is how it breaks down. Firstly, the health pool was correctly increased from 100 HP to 150 HP, a 1.5x buff as expected. However, the gas nerf that happened in public matches when the damage decreased from 9 HP to 6 HP per second did not carry over to custom lobbies. The gas still does 9 HP every second. So at 150 HP, it will down you in 17 seconds, much faster than the 25 seconds in public matches. The gas damage over time also works the same as the old system. It jumps from 9 to 18 at 1 minute, then up to 27 at 2 minutes, which is much more aggressive than public matches. Stims are also less effective in customs than in pubs. The old stims would heal 50 HP per second, which is half your health at 100 HP. When they buffed the health to 150, they also buffed the stims to 75 HP per second, so you'd still get half your health back with a well-timed stim. This buff did not carry over to custom lobbies. Stims in custom lobbies and World Series of Warzone still only heal 50 HP per second. So at most, you can get a third of your health back from a well-timed stim in the gas. What? A lot of numbers. I stopped listening. I got really into chugging my beer. So, given how weak stims are in World Series of Warzone, the gas play meta would be a durable gas mask, as many battle rages as you can find and stack in your backpack, self revives, and a med vest to buff both the battle rages and the self revives. That way, you'll actually have the option to make a gas play if you need to, and you won't get caught out in the gas with a badly timed stim that gives you no health back. It's only one week until the World Series of Warzone finals in London, so this information might give the edge to any competitor who knows it, given that most of them won't have a clue about the gas differences in custom lobbies. If you're supporting a particular team and want to help them win, tell them to watch this video. That way they'll know as much as they can about the most overlooked mechanic in Warzone. If you're a competitor yourself and you have any questions, my DMs are open on Twitter and I'm happy to give free gas coaching to any team who asks. I'll also be at the finals in person as a spectator and I really want to see a well-executed gas play in World Series of Warzone, so feel free to hit me up and I'll do what I can to help make that happen. If you take away one thing from this video, it's that you shouldn't fear the gas as much as you fear enemy players. With all the tools at your disposal to make gas plays, you shouldn't treat the gas as a forbidden zone that you can't access anymore. If anything, the gas is a safe zone full of empty buildings, free from campers, which you can use to rotate and get perfect positioning in the endgame. If you'd like to see more of my gas plays in action, click here, and I'll see you in the next one.